attacking a young Elias Veron, reputable midfield maestro for the indomitable Lions of Cameroon, shot to stardom from a humble beginning, playing for Little Foot Football Club of Tico through Mount Cameroon Football Club of Boya to Ajax of Amsterdam. It was a journey that took him to Burkina Faso, to Turkey, and to Ajax of Cape Town. Enos' debut with Little Foot Football Club of Tico was amazing. Yeah, I started around the year 1998 after my Top Cup, and I got uh, registered with Little Foot. At the time, Little Foot was in third division, and they were recruiting a lot of young, talented players around Tico. And I so happened to do well in the Top Cup in the year 1998, and I was selected and I started playing. But it was quite tough because I was in a team where you had too many talents, <laughs> and I was one of the smallest players among them. And um, normally in the Top Cup, I played in the defense as a number five. But when I came to Little Foot, I had to look for a position around attacking midfield because uh, I was playing among very mature players and, and older players, even though it was quality food. Yes, and uh, from there, how did you move on to Mount Cameroon Football Club of Boya? Well, how I got into Mount Cameroon was that um, in the year 1999 uh, to 2000, Little Food qualified for the Mini Interpols in Nimbe. And uh, we had a very talented team together with Dumbe Abolo, uh, Pele, Mus uh, Bison Moses. It was a very a talented team, and I've, I happen to play with, be fortunate to play with this great talent also. Um, Ajebe also, who came to play in Mancaron also. So that mini interpol, a lot of us shone bright. I remember scoring a very um, fantastic goal against Botafogo. That really made my name to become popular. And from there, I was, you know, there was interest from Mancaron to sign me uh, that year. After that, I had um, the late Sanga Inashus, who was the team manager of Little Food at that time, and he was in touch with. Mount Cameroon and they were very interested to sign me that is how I got to to, to sign with Mount Cameroon entering into the year 2000 and 2001 and uh, if we look at your stay in Mount Cameroon uh, football club of uh, Boya you must have had some memorable matches and there is something you could call an achievement with Mount Cameroon football club of Boya Yes, I my very first season that I was opportune to be with the first team because when I got to Mount Cameroon, uh, Mount Cameroon signed a lot of players. There were so many talents. And Pat Jomo, you will remember that in those days, the Mount Cameroon had very big names. You know, the Atem Valentine, the Mukakes, the Zezanga, all those names, huge names, and Tame Sopo. So someone like me, I was still very young. I think I was the youngest. So some of us were pushed to wear white. And I played the inter, mini interpose with 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 um, with Tico Young Stars on loan. So when I came back to Mount Cameroon, my very first season was after Mount Cameroon just won the Cup of Cameroon. Uh, um, then that my first season, Mount Cameroon was co uh, competing in the Africa uh, the Africa Cup at that time. So one of the memorable experience for me was to be part of the team that went to Equatorial Guinea to play, and that was my first time of entering a play. <laughs> It was a special experience. Yeah. And also, the one for me, one game, <laughs> <laughs> one, game for, one game for me that stands out for me in Mount Cameroon was um, when Mount Cameroon beat, beat Canon of Yaoundé 1-0. And it was a game that, that I, I was playing uh, um, against one of the players that looked like a model to me from Southwest, which was Marcus Mukake, who I was playing for Canon at that time. And I was, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a memorable moment for me to play in that game, which we won 1-0 uh, in Boya. And I'll never forget it. That's one memorable game I would always remember as far as Mount Cameroon is concerned. So you, you, you got into this plane for your first time. You went to Equatorial Guinea. It must have been a very exciting trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was very exciting. Banjo were very exciting, very, very exciting. And for me, it was, it was an honor to play with very big names. The names at that time was very big. They were very big names in Mount Cameroon. And uh, of course, at that level, you had already got uh, uh, good exposure. Was there any call for the Junior Lions, uh, for example? Yes, I was first called up at the time when we had... Uh, Goya Ikwam was the director, I think director of the academy at that time. We also had lead, uh, sorry, Kwai Kwam with Alive, sorry. But we had lead coach uh, Wabo, Wabo Allen. He was he was active in the team and he really 
he believed that I had a lot of potential. So I was first selected to be a, do a training camp in Umbe with the under 17 national team, which I couldn't go because of my studies. So I stayed back and focused on studies at the university. But my first call up for junior national team came the next season where I was called up by coach Abubeka Suleiman at that time. And uh, I was in the same same category with the Stefan Bia, uh, the Ladringue Mo, uh, uh, and then Alex Song, they came later, but um, that was my generation, which I was called up in the, on, the, on, uh, on, the, on the 17 and later on in the, on the 21, that's the, the junior national team. Oh, were you retained at any of the levels as you were called up? Yes, I was retained uh, on several occasions with uh, the junior national team. Uh, in fact, we had, we played the Francophonie games uh, if I remember quite well at the time, I don't know if it was in Niger or something like that. We, I, I was part of the, the team that played the, yes, the Francophonie games. And also we played qualifications for the Nations Cup and also for Olympics, which we didn't qualify that, that year, but I was able to play uh, most of the games, almost all the games uh, I played them. People go to the junior national team, soon they find themselves in the sport team and in the national team. Did that give you any, any reason to dream? Yes, of course, it gave me a reason to dream because um, the models which I had in front of me was Marcos Mukake. He was the closest of models in Southwest and seeing him making the big move to Fovu and then after to Kanong and later on, he was able to sign for Sedan Professional. So, and then you had other professionals like uh, Kale Sone, whom I, I heard of, and also you had Samuel Ojong who passed through the Kaji School Academy. So all these names that we saw and, and, and other players who were coming also for the day, they gave us dream. They helped us dream and believe that you know, if I keep working hard, you know, someday is going to also happen for us. So I was when I was going to the national team, I always had this dream and this belief that, yeah, you know, if it doesn't happen now, it's going to happen maybe uh, sometime soon. And in the course of that dream, you left Mount Cameroon Football Club, went to two other clubs before people really knew you were in Ajax of Cape Town. How was that transition? Um, that's that's very true, Panjomo. A, a lot of people don't have the details of that story. So at least um, they can get it here on Kejobo uh, Kevin TV. So when I uh, there was an agent who had been scouting me and he watched me also, not just my mom camera, but he watched me also play the university games. And he was very interested in me. He was from France. And so he had an opening for me to, to go for trials in Lance, but he wanted me to pass through Burkina Faso. So I, I went, these two clubs that you're talking about, the first club was in Burkina Faso, where I went there and I played almost a full season and um, the name of the club is Rai Club Kadiogo. It was in, uh, uh, at the time, it's in Ouagadougou. And I so happened to win the championship with this team for the first time in their history. Uh, after a long time, we won the league. And so uh, at the end of the season, I came back to, to Cameroon and realized that Mount Cameroon was in a dead situation and it needed to stay up in the first division. So I had a meeting with the president at that time, Fanny Kavé, Honorable Fanny Kavé. So I got back in the team and we helped the team stay up. And uh, there was this uh, person who had played in Cyprus, his name is Divine, and he's, he said he was looking for the best player in Tico, and they all told him, it's Veron, there's a young guy called Veron, 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 he's doing well. So he spoke to me and he said, listen, there's an opening in Cyprus, and players can leave there to Turkey. Now, Panjoma, one of the things that made me to even think about it is because that season, Mount Cameroon had a Turkish coach called Mahmoud. Yes. And that coach, when he came, he believed so much in me. And he really helped me to improve my game at that level, the way he was walking, the way he was talking to me. So when this guy said, you know, come to uh, Turkish Cyprus, it will become easy for you to get into the major Turkey. So I was already thinking about Coach Mahmoud and I was like, he's, he's from Turkey. So, and I heard a, a few uh, stories about African players who made it in Turkey. Like um, also you had someone like, JJ Okocha who played in Turkey and made a big name. So I was like, mm -hmm. at that time, he also had Apia, uh, the Ghanaian captain who the was Ghanian playing captain. in the So there were like people who were giving me an idea of, oh, uh, that is possible. You, you can get there. Yes, the Ghanaian, cap yes, Ghanaian captain. So I, I took my chance to go to, to Cyprus to have that experience. And uh, yeah, everything turned out well for me because I, I was a nominated player of the season. And that is what got a Turkish agent interest who was staying in Cape Town and he there spoke so much about me and he paid my flight tickets without seeing me by himself he only heard <laughs> and he said I'm going to bring this guy to Cape Town and that is how I got to Cape Town and the coach 
<laughs> the coach at the Cape Town team also was also a Turkish person. Okay. Also from Turkey. Okay. His name is Mushin Etugra, and he is one. One of the key yes so so you see i have a lot of turkish connection <laughs> <laughs> so he, he was one of the key person that really really shaped me and <laughs> and helped is his uh, so the coach in cape town was the one that really helped me to really develop my game and uh, that's how i got to ajax cape town and when you got to cape town ajax cape town how was it it was exciting. I didn't expect uh, that kind of uh, organization. I didn't expect to see those kind of facilities. The team was very organized and the dream even became more real because this is a team that uh, was a satellite team to Ajax Amsterdam, the big powerhouse in Europe, mm -hmm. who or the whole of Africa knew about them. And they already had certain uh, African ambassadors in the like of uh, George Finidi, in the like of uh, uh, Babangida, in the like of, uh, uh, you know, like also Sonio Lese. So these names were already um, a model to believe. And when I came to Cape Town, there were a few names that had also moved to Amsterdam, like uh, Benny Makati, like mm -hmm. Steven Pina. And exactly. so when I came to Cape Town, I was like, this is the place where I have to make that dream happen. And it so, <laughs> it so happened that I found myself in the midst of a very good team that for the first time in the team history after a long time, we were able to win a big trophy. The, they called it the APSA Cup that year, and it was very massive. And uh, yeah, I was all, also nominated as one of the best players in the league. So things just went well for me in Cape Town uh, when I was there. I, they are very memorable moments, and it's also unforgettable because my first son was born in Cape Town okay. when I got there in the year 2007. Okay. Um, you had already settled there and you were able to take your wife there? Yes. Yes, correct. Correct. I was able to do that. Uh, how what 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 was the response of the of the supporters of uh, Ajax Cape Town? You see huge followings out there for Kaiser Chiefs and other big teams in South Africa. How was the you know the reaction of the supporters of Ajax with all the performances that you were putting up? It was it was very special because I I brought something in the team that the team didn't have control so and strength, and that was so, something I brought and it was it was amazing because. Um, the Cape Town fans were very, very, they were very wonderful, very connected. You can really connect to them during a game. And Cape Town in itself was special because the big guns in Johannesburg the, uh, and also in the other cities and other states, they always came to hunt for players from Cape Town. Cape Town was like, Ajax Cape Town was like a hub, was like a poultry, was like a marketplace where every young talent wanted to show themselves. And it was a club that gave opportunity to young talents, to young players. It was just about grooming. So it was very exciting because everyone was always looking at the next talent from Ajax Cape Town. <laughs> so that was the kind of buzz and excitement that we had when I was in Cape Town. Did other clubs in South Africa try, like trying to get you out of there to their clubs? Yes, there were, there were a lot of interest from the top clubs um, at the time. But because I won player of the season, at, uh, at Ajax and every player who won the player of the season because you had two awards you had the player of the season you had the players player of the season uh, so I won the player of the season for the club but I also won the players players of the season and I was also nominated for the best player also in award in the whole of South African League at that time and uh, be, yes because of that uh, I was also opportune to be able to go to Ajax Amsterdam for trials for 10-day trials so all the interests that were already <laughs> in South Africa from uh, Sundowns or from Kaiser we're Chiefs open, we're open did not materialize plan. because I was already, <laughs> I already had my ticket to go to Amsterdam. <laughs> did it attract any call back to the the, the Indomitable Lions? No, 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 no. At that time, I did not receive any call. I did not receive any um, any any call, any any attention. I just knew that it was a matter of time. I just needed to focus. I wasn't even thinking about a call back home or all of that. I just knew that I needed to just keep focus and keep working and someday that will happen. Your move to Ajax Amsterdam after your trial was a blowout. How did it happen? Well, that was a big blowout. So before that happened, uh, Panjo, I went on trial in, in Israel to Maccabi uh, Haifa. Uh, there was an agent who was very interested and I came there when I won the player of the season and I went there for about a two weeks trial. But the deal didn't happen because the coach who was a new coach who came to the club, he also came with his own player. 
And that player was playing the same position as me. And <laughs> so it was quite difficult for the coach, even though he knew I was good to sign me and put his player on the side. So it became um, a very tough negotiation and uh, training at, the, at my club in Cape Town. And when I came back, <clears throat> it so happened that one of the, the goalkeepers of the uh, South African national team was also a Dutch uh, player, Dutch by birth, also called Hans Vonk. He was, my, was part of the team and was uh, the, the captain. So he was, had a lot of connection with Ajax Amsterdam. So he had put in a word with them and said, you know what, um, there's a player here here who won the player of the year you guys need to see him so by the time he put in that word in two days time there was a there was a call and there were flights arranged and i had to go to amsterdam so everything happened so fast like i was just going to amsterdam to do a trial normally they had to do it for 10 days but when i got there things went really fast like after the first it already was a big big shock because i was going to a club where one of the top world legends in football Marco Van Basten was a coach of the team mm -hmm. so that was already <laughs> something which I had to first sink in like wow I'm in Amsterdam and, and the coach here is Marco Van Basten before I had to you know switch my mind I say you are here for football you need to focus on football <laughs> <laughs> so but after three days of trade after three days of training with, with the team um Marco Van Basten called me on the side and then he said to me I, I really like you and I think we are going to sign you so this was like, I like, no, this is, I, in my mind, I was like, this is not true. It's like, I'm dreaming. <laughs> is this really happening? Like, did I, is that, did the coach tell me they're going to sign me? Wow. It was like, it wasn't still real. So I said to myself, I'm going to wait till the contract comes, till I sign it and I come back here. Then I'm, this is going to be happening real. This it means this is really real. So that's what happened. I came back and um, the contract was sent, discussed by my agents, and I was able to move back to Amsterdam. And things really went fast. In the space of a few weeks, things had moved so fast, and I found myself in Amsterdam. And you started training with all of these big names. How did you fit in into that, into that, into that squad? Well, the training we were doing in Cape Town, because uh, like I said, Ajax Cape Town is a satellite club of Ajax Amsterdam. So they, they have the same kind of training drills, the okay. same kind of system, and the same okay. kind of philosophy of work. So it, it, it looks like the two, the two years I spent in Cape Town prepared me for football in Amsterdam. So mm -hmm. when I got there, the, ex, the trainings, everything was, there was no much, much difference. It was, it was just that it was a little bit at a higher tempo and more quality players. But I really quickly settled in and uh, surprisingly on, on arriving just about a week after that, the coach was already calling me in the hotel room to say, I want to start with you. I want to start the game with you. Hmm. And that was really very fast. I didn't expect that. In my mind, I was like, I'm new here. Maybe I'll need like one year to settle, to understand what is happening. But when the coach spoke to me, he said, you can play. I think you have what it takes to play. So I'm ready to play with you. That's how fast things went. And uh, when this, the, the, the things were becoming very real, there must have been a lot of jubilation back at home. When you were communicating with your people back at home, how was it? Well, um, Banjo Moyu, when I signed for Ajax Amsterdam, very few people know that I was in Amsterdam. Because when people heard I was at Ajax, they kept thinking that I was in Cape Town. Okay. So they thought, when they say, eh, no, he's playing in Ajax, they would think, no, he's still playing in Cape Town. So very few people knew that I was already playing now in Amsterdam. So my family... Um, um, again, late, my late, very close manager and personal mentor, uh, late Sanga Ignatius, he was one of the key people who knew it. And then a few other family people around, they heard about it. But the majority of other football fans, they thought I was still in Cape Town. Until when I started playing Europa League games, not local league games in Amsterdam, Europa League games, which everyone could watch it. That exactly. is when many people started believing, like, yes, he's in Amsterdam, he's not in Cape Town anymore. So, what was of course, the there was huge jubilation, yeah. um, excitement. There was huge jubilation, excitement um, from family, from also uh, former teammates and also uh, former presidents, uh, like my president in, in Littlefoot. And just the people who knew me in football close around, they were like, wow. Um, I remember one of my very close, close uh, childhood football friends, like uh, we call him Epele. 
he was like the football i the professional i didn't play you are playing for both of us now so it's like it was a it was a, like a proud moment for many of my former teammates that at least from among them there's one person who was able to break through and can represent them at that level so it was it was really a proud moment for for all of us and the Cameroonian community in in holland in amsterdam when they when they knew you were there how did they react well the, the Cameroonian community they there's because there's a Cameroonian community association so they got in contact with me and i attended a few of their, their meetings uh just to 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 extend uh, greetings and to know the people that in the community even though with the with the schedule we had for games and work it's not always easy to meet with everyone but it was it was a lot of pride and the, the surprising thing also was that it was not just Cameroonian community who were excited about me you also had Nigerian community mm -hmm. because the name they had the name Eno and many of them knew and believed that I was from Nigeria <laughs> so they, they were talking to one another and said this is Nigerian boy played for Ajax <laughs> until when a few of them met me and I said, no, I'm not from Nigeria. I'm from Cameroon. That's when they said, uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so here you were in uh, Ajax and uh, um, uh, you must have had some real big games with them, especially at continental level in the European, in the European competitions. Yes, yes, big games uh, for me was like what I used to watch on TV far away. Now I'm being part of it. It was like <laughs> this. This is a dream come true. And yes. of course there are a lot of memorable games, especially when you play. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are a lot of me memorable games, especially when you play. You know, against some of the big clubs in Europe. Like for example, one of those big games you played, you still remember. Yes, I remember quite a lot of them. It so happened that in the Champions League, uh, the years which we played Champions League, like in two to three successive years, Ajax Amsterdam, we find ourselves with Real Madrid in, in the same group, three successive years. So I so happened to play Real Madrid six times, home and away, home and away in Champions League. And that was huge. Because this was the Real Madrid team that had uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, the Higuain, the Kaká, um, a huge team uh, with a lot of talents, Di Maria, um, um, yeah, Sergio Ramos, also Lasana Diara, um, Alu Diara. So even Marquez Sien was there later on. But these these were huge teams. And another team which also was very uh, memorable team to play for me in the Champions League was against AC Milan. And okay, in AC Milan this this year, the twenty ten, getting into uh, twenty eleven, they had set off. They had Ronaldinho. They had um, all also Slatan uh, Ibrahimovic. So they had these veterans, Gattuso, all these uh, Pilo players who were playing in the team. And these are players I'd watched from distance. Now I was playing with them in the same pitch. And it was, these are the moments that, you know, you, you dream of and then you, you find yourself being in that arena and it's unforgettable, it's special.